Hi, Rick. Rick asks, Dana, what is the first step in finding yourself again? I'm just so lost and empty. That is such a fantastic question. And, you know, it's going to vary from person to person. I think there's two parts to this. Okay. So I think the first part is realizing that you've been through a lot and being extra, 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 extra good to yourself right now. You know, this is healing Rick. And it's like, it's like if, a, if you're overcoming a really awful disease or, or virus, you know, it's toxicity. You know, if you've been poisoned, if you've gone through something where you're just so incredibly toxic, we're to, to realize that there is a healing process that's going to take place and to, to be as compassionate as we possibly can with ourselves as we're starting to heal again, because it's, you know, we're not going to be able right off the bat to be able to just get back out there and do, you know, live life just like how we used to live it. Like there's going to, there's going to be that healing period. And that's, that's normal. And I know it sucks. Like it, nobody wants to go through that, right? Like it's bad enough. We've had to go through an abusive relationship. It's even worse when you have to go through the recovery of the abusive relationship, but just being as compassionate as you possibly can with yourself right now. And so that's a big first step. Then I would say, in addition to that is continually asking yourself, you know, what, what do I need right now? What can I do right now in this moment? Like, what is the most compassionate thing that I could do right for myself right now? Or what, what is basically, yeah. What do I need? Like, what do I need right now? And then, then really listening to the answer that, that surfaces, because it'll probably be different every time you ask yourself that question, you know, it might be, that you need to go to bed earlier, that you're tired, you know? And cause there's, there can be, there's, I think there, we, oh man, can be so judgmental of ourselves, right? Like if we're going through something difficult and we're exhausted and it's eight 30 at night and we're like, man, I don't want to go to bed at eight 30. You know, I, we can get upset with ourselves for wanting, for going to bed at eight 30, you know, or uh, getting upset with ourselves that we're wide awake at two 30 in the morning and that kind of stuff. And so trying to release the judgment that we have around, around where you are and just being like, okay, well, what, do, what, what can help right now? What do I need right now? And maybe that is going to bed early when you're tired. Maybe that is, um, you know, getting into a support group or, or calling a therapist, you know, getting, setting an appointment with a therapist or with a doctor or um, getting a massage or spending time with a friend or cultivating a new hobby or, you know, any number of things. So learning to tune inward, really, I will tell you the, 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 the ultimate goal of all of this is you finding yourself again. And after these relationships, most people, very normal, they feel completely blown apart emotionally and sometimes physically and sometimes financially. It's truly just kind of this ground zero starting point again. And, you know, you've heard me talk about this before, but kind of the beauty in that is that you get to decide which pieces of your life that you're going to rebuild with. And that's incredibly powerful. And in many ways, it's a gift. It's a gift that most people will never do because most people never bother to disassemble their whole lives and rebuild it again consciously because it's a lot of work and it comes with a tremendous amount of pain and loss and sacrifice. And more. most people would rather stay in complacency and mediocrity or misery even than change. So... I think you can kind of brick by brick, you're going to be rebuilding your life. And the more you can tune in and the more you can figure out, okay, you know, who, who am I and what am I all about? And what do I want this next chapter in my life to be about? And what, what do I want to have this chapter include? What kind of people, what kind of hobbies, 
you know, where do I want to live? Um, you know, just all of it, just start kind of questioning everything, I guess. And you'll know when you're on the right path based on how you feel. So and you heard, I'm sure you've heard me talk about this before, but my whole kind of emotional scale of like zero to 10, 10 being things that really juice you, really excite you. And five being things that you're lukewarm about and zero being things that you're ice cold about. And, and it, it helps to, to get to know yourself. If you're like, I don't know who I am. I don't know where to start. I don't know. Like, I don't know to start going around and ranking things on the scale, just to get an idea of um, how you do feel about things because feeling numb and kind of living a life based on shoulds is a very common thing that most people go through. You know, they have a house or a career or a spouse or what have you, everything in their life, clothes, a car, a religion, all based on what their parents had or what they felt they should have or what their friends had or, you know, whatnot. And so when our life is blown apart and we're going back and we're consciously rebuilding these things, to start turning inward and being like, okay, as an now you're an adult. As an adult, what do you think? What really resonates with you? And focusing on, so it can help to just get kind of a baseline of, and of, of how you feel about certain things. And granted, of course, this is not a uh, a hard science here, right? Like the, your scale is going to change as you grow and change. So it's a good thing to a good idea to kind of keep revisiting. Uh, your emotional scale to just tune in with yourself periodically and be like, how do I feel about this? I recommend starting in a place that there's not a lot of emotional heaviness, maybe, maybe a bookshelf, maybe your kitchen cabinet is a good one asking yourself. So like, for example, I really like this coffee cup. It's my, you know, my color that I assigned to myself six, seven years ago was the color red. That was my anchoring color the reminding myself that I, I loved me, damn it, you know, and that there were a lot of things about me that were lovable. And just because nobody that I was dating could see that didn't, didn't mean that that wasn't the case. And so I started buying things that were red as my way of kind of climbing out of that hole and just being like, I, I'm, wor I'm worthy of love, you know, like I, I'm a good person. And you know? So I love the color. I love the size of this mug. It holds a lot of coffee or a lot of tea. And, you know, I would say, I really like this. This is like, you know, it's up there nine on my emotional scale. Uh, this, oh, let's see what else do I have around here. My tea that I'm drinking, this Yogi tea, Egyptian licorice deliciousness is a 10 flat out 10. I flipping love this. I love everything about it. I love the flavor. I love the price. I love that it's at my local store. It's just spot on. That's a hands down 10. This mobile back here, I got this on Etsy a while back and I love it. I just love it. And that to me is a 10. This chair that I'm sitting on is, I would say it's probably about a six. The more rickety it gets, the <laughs> the more that number is, is quickly falling. Um, let's see this microphone. I really like this microphone. That's a 10, uh, ATR 2100, just in case anyone is doing a YouTube channel or a podcast and is, is wondering it's love. It. it was like 80 bucks on Amazon. Love it. Uh, let's see what else. So anyways, so you're going, going through and figuring out, okay, what, where do I rank? certain things. And then you'll have an idea of where to start. And so once you're kind of going through these different areas of your life that you don't have that emotional investment in, like your dishes, right? Or although you're, I was going to say, or your closet, but the closet can be a very emotional space for a lot of people because I think maybe even as maybe men are this, men are probably the same way, but women, I know for sure, uh, we tend to have clothes in a wide variety of sizes and styles. And there's a lot of, we tend to buy like 
oh, this is my goal dress. If I lose 20 pounds, I'm going to wear this dress. Or if I, I, man, I tend to buy clothes. <laughs> like, I don't live the, like where I don't go to cocktail parties. Like, why am I buying a dress? Like totally delusional. Like, why, do, why, why am I buying these clothes for this life that I do not have? But so there's a lot of uh, unlived dreams, I think, in my closet. And so it can be very insightful and very cathartic at the same time to start actually just getting rid of these clothes and donating them to people that are actually going to go do these things. Right. So, and asking yourself as you get dressed, you know, where do you rank certain items of clothing? And then where things get really interesting is if you start finding that you have a life full of a lot of things that are like between like a three and probably, I would say like a three and a six. That's, you know, just kind of this blah, this blah zone, especially if it's below a five, like five and six is kind of, you know, mediocrity and three to five is, it's just, that's, that's existing, you know? And so it can get also very insightful when you start looking at thinking about your friendships on kind of this emotional scale of what's nourishing me and what's draining me. And of these nourishing friendships, you know, kind of where on the scale are they? Do I, do I leave this person's company feeling good about myself, feeling energetic, feeling alive, feeling enthusiastic, feeling calm, feeling kind of this range of positive emotions? Do I feel safe and secure and that I can be open about myself and, and all of these things? And and thinking about, okay, and then thinking about in your past, okay, were there other people in my past that I left feeling anxious and depressed and ground down and jealous and paranoid and insecure? A lot of those feelings tend to be more of the feelings of the toxic relationships, which I would say, you know, are definitely like a five and below. You are not alone. You are not crazy. And you really can move forward and heal from this. Thank you.